Amen. Amen. Again, today, it is a blessing that God has bestowed upon us. He has allowed us to be here today and to break the bread of life one more time. We thank God for being God. Thank him for being such a great God. We thank God for bringing us through another year, 2020. And here we come to the second Sunday of a brand new month of a brand new year, 2021. God is good and he's good all the time. We want to encourage your hearts today that just as God has been with us and has watched over us over the many years, God is still God and that we can still depend on God to be who he says he is and to do what he says he will do for us. Thank God he has never left us alone. And so he has left with us his promise. That whatever comes, whatever goes, that he will never leave us alone that his promises to us are certain. His promises are true. There is a word from the Lord. I want to invite our attention to two passages of, of scripture. One found in the book of Joshua, the 17th chapter, in the 18th verse, the second and second Kings, the sixth chapter, and the 17th verse. The first passage of scripture, Joshua 17 and 18 reads, but the mountain shall be thine. For it is a wood, and thou shalt cut it down, and the outgoings of it shall be thine. For thou shalt drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots, and though they be strong. From the second passage of scripture, second Kings, the sixth chapter, verse 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. When God gives us the mountain, I want us to think for a few minutes on the subject when God 
gives us the mountain. Jesus is coming to this world. Jesus is coming among us must mean that God cared about us. Must mean that God uh, respects this earthly life. And in respecting this earthly life, we must understand that he respects reality. And a part of reality is physical reality. This is a world that cannot totally ignore the physical realities. This is a world that cannot totally ignore the physical things, the physical stuff in life. And we need the physical many times in order to survive, to be the best that we can be. God felt that this earth was suitable, was a suited location for his son to spend his brief life here among me. Jesus, uh, some of us will remember in our Lord's Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter in the 11th verse when he prayed in his model prayer. His disciples had come to him and asked him to teach us to pray. And in teaching his disciples to pray, Jesus himself spoke of physical reality. In other words, when he prayed, uh, give us this day our daily bread, he was praying to his father, remembering that we also need the physical things and the physical stuff. Some of us uh, might recall that God called Joshua to lead the Israelites into the land of Canaan after Moses' death. And you will also recall that Joshua spoke to uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. He talked about the physical reality of life. He said, but the mountain shall be yours. For it is a wood and you shall cut it down and what comes out of it shall be yours. For you shall drive out the Canaanites though they have iron chariots and, and though they are strong. Joshua realized that his time of leading Israel would soon be coming to an end. And, and, and here he was uh, uh, giving out the land portions to the different tribes of Israel. And, 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 and when he came, he came to uh, the portion that was to be given to the tribe of Joseph. He uh, gave them theirs, but uh, they were not satisfied. They felt that they had been shortchanged. And so they asked Joshua, Joshua, why would you give us 
uh, this just won the lottery. You, 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 you understand that there are, there are many of us, and, 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 and not only are there many of us, but we are still growing every day. Joshua, what, 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 what's going on? What's up with that? Joshua said, yes, I realize there, there, there's a whole bunch of you. There's a, there's a whole slew of you. And, 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 and since the hill country of, of Ephraim is not enough for you, here's what you need to do. You go, need to go climb up into the forest. And, 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 and there you need to clear the ground in the land of the Perizzites and, 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 and of the giants. You, you need to clear that land for yourself. Still, still, they, they, they were not satisfied. They, they still complained. But Joshua, there's not enough of, of that land. There's not enough hill country for us and the Canaanites living down in the plain. You know, there are those in, uh, in Beth Shan and, and in, in its villages and, and, and in the valley of Jezreel. And, and you know they have a great advantage over us. They, 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 they have uh, iron chariots. So Joshua said to the children of Joseph, uh, uh, these were the tribes of the, 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 the tribe of Joseph. He said, uh, Joseph, he said to them, uh, well, yeah, I, uh, I have to agree with you. And there's a lot of you, and, and you're very strong. And uh, I guess I have to agree with you that one lot is not enough for you. But you see, you also get the hill country. Uh, it, it's, it's just a, a lot of trees there now, not much, but a lot of trees there now. But, 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 but what you do is you 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 go in in there and you you clear you clear that land and and make it your own land from one end to the other. And and and, 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 and I realize that the Canaanites have iron chariots, but uh, the Canaanites, even with their iron chariots, won't stand a chance against you. In other words, in other words, if God has given it to you, it's yours. Uh, and we walk by faith, not by sight. And uh, furthermore, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Uh, the land given to Ephraim and Manasseh was uh, just a narrow uh, wooded land and, and Joshua agreed that 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 these people uh, uh, were strong and fierce and, and and he agreed yes they have iron chariots uh, which the children of Joseph didn't have but 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 Joshua told them not to worry don't worry don't worry, because God yeah. has given you the mountain. Yeah. And, 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 and if God has given you the mountain, the mountain will be yours. In other words, God's promises are certain. God's promises are true. Oh, yeah. And uh, what Joshua said now, 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 I listen to what Joshua said and in the face of the Canaanites. And, 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 and I, have to, I have to agree that what Joshua said in the face of the, 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 the Canaanites was, 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 was out of much more than, than mere foolishness. Rather than out of foolishness, it was out of faith. And it was out of much faith. Ephraim and 
But now, sir, we're up against what seemed impossible, insurmountable odds. Uh, given the dangers involved, it would have been logical to, for them to have given up in utter despair. Uh, without an unfailing faith, we, we uh, ourselves are on the border of a world without hope. Oh, yeah. We must have faith. Oh, yeah. Without faith, uh -huh. uh, they considered themselves boxed in yeah. by a bad situation uh -huh. with no hope of deliverance. Oh, yeah. Israel had what seemed to be a hopeless situation. Israel's physical eyesight might have been 20 to 20, but they didn't have a lot of spiritual vision. You see, when we just have physical eyesight, when we just have physical vision, we, we, we see only the natural, we see only the physical. Uh, there, 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 there's always something to frustrate our faith. But, uh, but uh, I pray for us as Jesus prayed for Peter when Satan asked for permission to sift him like wheat. Jesus prayed that Peter's faith would not fail. And I pray that our faith won't fail. I, I pray that in a society such as ours, uh, in our society seems like those who apparently care the least about the cause of Jesus Christ seem to hold the most power. Life's insecurities show up from time to time. And the devil endeavors to steal my joy. But by faith and, and by spiritual vision, I can say the enemy may have the iron chariots, but God has given me this mountain. Disappointments and cloudy thoughts may come against me, and dangers may lie all around me, but I can say with faith that God has given me this mountain. And I, I must run some risks on this journey. Sometimes I get caught up in some bad situations. Every now and then I have to struggle with fear. But God has given me this mountain. I've had my share of ups and downs. I've had some dark nights, and I've had some days of sickness. I've had some days of sadness and separation. John the 16th chapter and the 33rd verse says in the world, you will have tribulation. But Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter and the 6th verse promises, that the Lord will never leave us, oh, yeah. and he'll never forsake us. Oh, yeah. So Joshua said to the children of Joseph, uh -huh. yes, I know the Canaanites oh, yeah. have iron chariots, yeah. and I know that they are strong, and they are intimidating, mm -hmm. but I don't want you to worry. You are going to defeat them. And you're going to drive them out. Uh -huh. I, 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 I heard somebody saying, wait, wait, wait up, Joshua. 
Wait a minute, I, I, I don't understand what you're trying to tell me. You, 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 you must know something we don't know. You must see something we can't see. And if you don't know something that we don't know or see something that we can't see, this business that you're talking about is just crazy. Uh, uh, you see, they have iron chariots. How are we going to drive them out? Uh, tell me, Joshua, is this some ugly joke? Or is this just some blind optimism? What's up with you anyway? Don't you even see the situation we're in? Well, well, what seemed impossible to them uh -huh. did come to pass. The Israelites whipped the Canaanites despite, this, despite uh, their iron chariots. And what was it that Joshua knew that the Israelites didn't know? Uh, Joshua knew the same thing that Elisha knew when he prayed, Lord, please open his eyes so he may see. And the Lord opened the young man's eyes and, and he saw and behold, the mountains uh, were full of horses and, and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Syria and Israel were at war. Syria, uh, the Syrian king, Benadad, had tried to catch up with Elisha. Elisha was God's servant. And uh, Elisha kept giving Benadad's secret plans to Israel uh, before he could execute them. Uh, and Israel's king always knew uh, serious plans before he could carry them out. Benadad figured, well now, there's got to be an informant in my camp. You see, he didn't, he didn't know God. Therefore, he didn't know God's ways. He didn't know that the Holy Spirit speaks to God's people and tells us what he wants us to know. Well, after a while, he, he found out that it was Elisha, a lone prophet in Dothan. It was Elisha who regularly wrecked his plans. And he decided that there's only one way. I got to take him out. So he sent his troops and, and his horsemen and, and his chariots to Dothan uh, in the dark of the night, preparing to take one lone servant of God, iron chariots and foot soldiers and prancing, pawing horses, the Syrian army, surrounding Dover. And right early in the morning, Elisha's young servant got up and went outside, looked all around, and he looked up. When he looked up, he saw a threatening sight. He saw iron chariots all around the city of Dover. A great army looking for one lone child of God. 
That's when he cried out, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Alas, my master, what shall we do? You know, when that question comes up, what shall we do? One has to have a great faith to answer that question. And Elisha answered, don't fear, don't be scared. They that are with us are more than they that are with them. He began to pray, Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. God opened the servant's eyes and he looked all around him. And he looked up and he saw God's armies in fiery chariots up in the mountains. God's army up in the mountains just giving the signal that God was there. That God was there to deliver them from danger. See, the word I want to leave with you today is that God can and God will. God will deliver us from whatever it is we find ourselves in. And when 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 we when we toil within the bonds and under the bondage of sin, God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He sent his son to deliver us from our bondage. Jesus came to this world to purchase our redemption. His blood was made a ransom just to set the captives free. He was crucified on a crude cross. And he was buried in a borrowed tomb. But God got him up right early on Sunday morning. God got him up with all power in his hands. That's why the songwriter wrote, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. It is washed. My my faith, my faith tells me that if I will trust in God, my faith tells me that if I just hold out until tomorrow, everything will be all right. My faith tells me that when all around my soul gives way. Uh -huh. He's there in my own bed, hope and stay. Oh, yeah. Faith tells me that when my mother mm -hmm. and my father forsake me, oh, yeah. Yeah. then the Lord oh, yeah. will take me up. Oh, yeah. Faith tells me that when sadness mm -hmm. and sorrow lie all around me, and when trouble entraps me, and when the exuberance of youth gives way to the burden of old age, that God is still on the throne. My faith tells me that the Lord will make a way somehow. He shelters me from life's stormy weather, and he bears me over life's trouble see. I thank God that he's my strength. He's a healer for the sick. He's a friend to the friendless. Stumbling blocks are thrown into my pathway. But I'm going to run on anyhow because God has given me this mountain. Trials and troubles and tribulations try to discourage me. 
but I'm going to pray on anyhow because God is still in charge of my life. Satan wages war against me, but I'm going to fight on anyhow for the Lord is on my side. I'm tired. I'm weak. I'm warm. But I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hand because he'll lead me to that blessed promised land. God has given me my mountain. And uh, here's a word to encourage your hearts today. This joy that I have, this peace that I have, this love that I have, this mountain that God has given me, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. What God has for me, it is for me, said the songwriter. What God has for me, it is for me. I know, I know, I know without a doubt, my God will bring me out. And what God has for me, it is for me. I thank God today that he made me a promise that no matter what comes and what goes, he made me a promise that if I'll trust in him, if I'll put my trust in him, if I'll keep my faith and just hold on to my hope, and after a while and by and by, whatever I have to go through, he'll go through with me. And after a while and by and by, thank God, he'll make everything all right. God bless you. God bless you. table to commemorate, separate, uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper. It is a reminder to us that
that it is not about us. It is about Jesus Christ and what he accomplished for us at Calvary's rugged cross. His blood was made a ransom to set the captives free. His blood was made a ransom to purchase our salvation, even to purchase our redemption. And so as we come, we come remembering the words of Jesus Christ, this do in remembrance of me. I thank God that he has again given us the privilege of coming and remembering him at the Lord's table. He was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows and full of grief, and like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by his stripes are we healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, but the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. And when the hour had come, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I shall never again eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the mind from now on until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. And in the same way he took the cup after they had eaten, saying this cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, it is again that we bow before you in your holy presence, just as humble as we know how. Our Father, we come thanking you, thanking you for your grace and your mercy, thanking you for your goodness and your kindness, for your love and your compassion. We thank you, God, for that love, 
which was such a great love that it compelled you to send to this world your only begotten son to die for the sins of mankind. Now, Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this, his last supper, where he let his apostles know that though he was to go away and prepare a place for us, that he was leaving on record the commemoration of this Last Supper, that we who are baptized believers might do this in remembrance of him. Bless, O oh God, this bread, which represents the broken, bruised, beaten, and battered body of our Lord and Savior, and bless this cup, which represents the blood that he shed on Calvary's cross, such that it ran down Calvary's mountain. We thank you, God, for all of your blessings, and we thank you for this, another privilege that we might remember the supreme sacrifice which Jesus made for us on that crude cross of Calvary. Whenever we eat this bread or drink this cup, may we be reminded that it represents the greatest sacrifice that could have ever been made in our stead. It is in the mighty, matchless, magnanimous, and miraculous name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we pray this in every other prayer. And dear God, it is for your glory that we say, Amen. The Lord Jesus, in the same night which he was betrayed, took bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after they had eaten, he said, this cup represents the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us eat now and drink together. We are told that after they had eaten, after supper, they went out into the Mount of Olives. We don't have a Mount of Olives to go out to, but as we 
go. May we keep in mind what Jesus did for us. And let us keep in mind that Satan will forever be on our trail trying to turn us around. As we go now, let us love the Lord with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our strength. And let us love one another as Christ loved us so much that he was willing to die for our sins. God bless you.